So if Barbados wants to buy stuff from Trinidad, it buys oil from Trinidad, it buys them with American dollars. So therefore they have to run a current account surplus with the United States to get the dollars. So this is bonkers, okay? And then if Jamaica wants to trade with Haiti, and Haiti wants to trade with Barbados or Aruba or any of the smaller countries, like St. Lucia, they all need American dollars. So there's a big movement now in the Caribbean to introduce Bitcoin as a clearinghouse for all the Caribbean countries. And this is really interesting. Now, of course, the Yanks go mad about this because it, it, you know, if the currency is a part of your power. So these are good parts. So Bitcoin, blockchain, you know, that's, there's real advantages. If the Caribbean islands can be incredibly isolated. You know, we always think of, you know, we go down to Jamaica, it's Cuba, but very isolated. And for them, this is a huge liberation to have a blockchain type trading account. On the other hand, when an asset goes up by so much, so quickly, you've got to get nervous. You know, isn't it, like there's, there's always a great difference between a speculator and an investor. So a speculator tends to put a little bit of money down hoping for a huge return. An investor puts a huge amount of money down hoping for a little return, okay? And once you get your head around those two differences, so the people that I know who trade Bitcoin, they were trading all sorts of shit over the years. You know, that's in their, in, you know, they don't seem to me to be like, well, yeah, it's a little bit down and it's the hope for the huge thing. Whereas I'd say your clients that you talk to are the opposite. They're big Canadian funds, they have pension funds, they have slow money, they have a lot of money, they want to make a little bit. As opposed to our little friends who have a little bit of money and they want to make a whole bit. So I think Bitcoin's, okay, if it blows up, I wouldn't be surprised.